it's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves. As white peeps in the United States are freaking the fuck out over killer clowns, let's show them how homie gets back at Mr. Establishment, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Black and brown peeps around the world are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the founding of the Black Panther Party. But to say this commemoration is bittersweet would be a fucking understatement. Outside of a Beyonce Super Bowl performance, no serious acknowledgement of the Panthers' vital contributions to revolutionary theory and practice can gloss over the sheer fucking brutality of the repression that the United Snakes unleashed on its cadre and the organization as a whole. This ruthless campaign of repression was planned and coordinated by the greasy motherfuckers at the FBI through a series of dirty operations grouped together under the infamous umbrella of Pro. Cointel Pro, picked shorthand for a counterintelligence program, was already up and running by the time the Panthers arrived on the scene in 65, having been earlier used to fuck with independentistas in my homeland of Body Ken, also known as Puerto Rico, as well as members of the US Communist Party, the New Left, and various civil rights leaders. But as it turns out, that was just a warm up for what's still to come. In the five and a half years between when they formed and Cointel Pro officially ended, the Black Panther Party was the target of no less than 230. 33 fucking ops, overseen and carried out by the FBI, who used a toxic fucking mix of surveillance, deception, psychological warfare, and widespread infiltration to help steer up internal beefs and provoke strife with other armed organizations in hopes of inciting violent confrontations, such as the shooting on the UCLA campus that killed two influential leaders of the LA chapters, Bunchy Carter and John Higgins. When this didn't do the trick, the FBI engaged in straight up assassinations, a prime example being the 1969 murder of Fred Hampton who was killed in his bed by a Chicago police death squad, acting under orders of the feds and with the active cooperation of his personal bodyguard, who just so happened to be an FBI plant. At a time when every small town police department has its own fucking tank and enough military grade weapons to invade Luxembourg, it is sometimes forgotten that the very first SWAT team raid was launched against the Black Panthers office in Los Angeles, culminating in a four hour firefight in which four Panthers and four pigs were injured, but amazingly no one was killed. As a result of Cointel Pro and its unnamed covert successor programs, dozens of Panthers and former Panthers were framed up on bogus charges and many sentenced to long prison sentences, in some cases serving decades in motherfucking solitary confinement. These political prisoners were joined in the vast fucking bowels of the American Gulag system by captured soldiers of the Black Liberation Army, many of whom were themselves former Panthers who opted for underground armed struggle following the faithful split between Huey P. Newton and Eldridge Cleaver. As the revolutionary threat of the Panthers was receding, the state massively expanded the scope of its counterinsurgency operations. In 1971, Richard Nixon launched the so-called War on Drugs, which Tricky Dick's domestic policy chief, John Ehrlichman, later admitted was a thinly veiled plot to target black peeps and anti-war leftists. What matters is that Mr. Tynan's clients and the Bureau have come up with a solution to our Panther problem. Final solution, you might say. You give us free reign of the ghetto, we solve your problem. The pacifying qualities of heroin are quite formidable. The resulting wave of mass incarceration was only increased under the Reagan administration. From the early days of our administration, Nancy has been using marijuana on a daily basis. Which cynically ramped up the so-called war on drugs, while simultaneously cutting social programs and using the CIA to flood inner city neighborhoods with crack. Shit got even worse under Billy Clint, whose three strikes federal sentencing provisions led to an explosion of prison population, setting the stage for the system of mass exploitation of imprisoned slave labor, against which tens of thousands of prisoners are currently waging a historic strike. Yep, like I said, bittersweet, to say the fucking least. But while the United Snakes ruling class was ultimately able to contain and destroy the Black Panthers and has since honed and sharpened its methods of counterinsurgency and repression, there is still much to be learned from those who have experienced firsthand the extreme lengths to which it will go to maintain its domination. Front, 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 front.